All right. Well, if um, we have a quorum, so if we'll uh, start the meeting at six thirty-one. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is there anything that needs to be amended, or are we good to go as we have it? I think we should just table the executive session for two weeks because I don't have my packet or any information to, <clears throat> to talk to you about. So I think we should just push that for two weeks. It's nothing crazy. So. Yeah. Okay. Is everybody good to that? Yep. Yep. Okay. Other than that, should we put on the agenda a discussion about town meeting? Um, we can. Well, we got the warning. Yeah, I mean, it can be talked just like the warning, I guess. Okay. We can just yeah, bring I just... it up at that. Yeah. I'll just I'll make a note. And... Oh. All right. Okay, so just. Okay, second. Dave moved it. Second. And second. Gene second it, I think, first. Did we get that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we have uh, budget discussions, which I think for the most part we can't, we're at a good we're at a good place. The last discussion, um, so I don't know any changes, Therese, since the last one. I know we're still using our old one. Well, the um, I put the tax rate calculation again in your packet, and mm. <clears throat> excuse me, and. Um, I just totally lost my train of thought. Oh, and so I, I put in the library, the recreation committee, and the $1,000 request that we received a petition for from the Randolph Playhouse. So when you look at the tax rate, that separate sheet that I made you up in the left-hand corner, there's a, um, you know, it just calls that out. So when you look at that tax rate number, it includes if everything was to pass on town meeting, what it would look like for the tax rate. Okay. And I I did out the calculate. So right now, the way Therese has it, I, let's assume everything that's on the, the warning was approved. That would be a five cent increase, 5.1 cent increase, uh, which she shows here in her calculations, of which 2.8 cents is between the library the recreation department and the playhouse. So, so our budget, I guess you call the base budget that we're proposing um, is 2.3 cents as it stands currently. There you go. Yeah, so I didn't make any changes to the budget itself because you hadn't made any last time. And Chris, did you see, I can see you have the hard copy there, right? Yeah, I just took it out of your bag. Okay, cool. I didn't um, I didn't break it down farther on each one of those, but um, it's roughly about twenty one thousand twenty one thousand dollars per cent right now. Mm -hmm. so, so you can kind of do the math on what the library and the you know the rec the rec piece of it's you know it's almost you know it's like one point four cents. The library is you know one point two or you know and playhouse is like a Point one cent or something. So yeah, and just remember that people have. I mean, I had no idea that petition was coming from the Playhouse, and um, so people have until they have to have handed it in to Pam by the nineteenth. So, so you know, hopefully, so we know about everything that's out there. But is that a petition of Bethel residents or Randolph residents or both or in Bethel? And Pam yeah. verified it that they received five percent of the signatures, and right. my guess is. Dave or uh, Paul, excuse me, is that um, <clears throat> uh, Bennett Law turned it in. So my guess is maybe he's on that theater committee, and they all maybe they maybe they went to more than one town. Would be my if I had hazard a guess, it probably going to a surrounding town. So he passed the petition. He got five percent of the registered voters in Bethel, and Pam certified those. So, so it's a one time. One -time. <laughs> it seems like it, yeah. Uh, yeah, they could go. They could go down the human services uh, side they, of it in the future. They could have. Yep, and Lindley's messaging saying that he is on the board of the Playhouse. So um, that was my assumption when he when I got when uh, Pam got the petition. So, 
So it may be one of those to follow up on the human services yeah, piece of next, next year. Yeah. Um, with yeah. and I mean, granted, uh, you know, you know, the individual didn't do anything technically wrong by no. having the petition. I mean, they they probably could have easily come before the select board and gotten the same same thing too. But um, <clears throat> um, well, it's because there's support. Um, we can't we can't add it to the to the no no they'd have to stand up a town meeting it's standalone and, now they would have to have a town a Bethel town resident be their representative and stand up a town meeting and ask for yeah. an additional thousand uh, dollars to be put on the human services number but but they did the petition so it's they did it this way yeah, so that's fine it's that's fine, fine. Yeah. I just could, because I think that's where it ought to go. <laughs> it doesn't explain much, though. Yeah, no, it doesn't. They don't have that that narrative in the town report that right. talks about what they do and and yeah. how, how they serve they how they service serve for, you know Bethel and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. missing. Well, it just might be an opportunity to educate the individual individuals so that next year maybe yeah. they can propose yeah. the yeah. human services and have a nice little blurb in the town. Yeah. Book yeah. and <clears throat> okay. So, so as far as the budget goes, did anybody have any thing they wanted to add or or move around or talk about or? No. <clears throat> I think we beat it up pretty good. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, so hearing none, seeing none. I guess we'll move on. Then we have the uh, the draft town meeting warning and the bond informational. So maybe we just start with the town meeting warning first. <clears throat> and then so that's changed a little bit um, because I had to add the um, the bond vote to it, and I did have the town attorney look at the warning, <clears throat> mainly just to deal with, uh, to look at the language. I mean, he obviously scripts the vote uh, language, but to make sure it was placed as he wanted. So he did make a couple of small changes um, to the warning, just legal changes. So other than that, it should be all set to go. And of course it states on there that, that we're, meeting in person and that, um, you know, when the Australian ballot is going to be held and that sort of thing. Grace, can you just remind us um, if the bond vote doesn't pass, what happens? We'll vote it again, probably in um, April or May. We'll just re-vote it. I did draft a mailer and sent it to Aldrich and Elliot and um, to ask Mike to ask them to edit it. So besides a blurb in town report and besides, um, you know, we'll, I still want to do a mailer just like we did for the first. So that way it goes to everybody. It'll go to occupants. So whether they're a registered voter or not, it'll go to everybody. <clears throat> yeah. If we were to have a different schedule or something for the town meeting, how does that impact the number 17 about electing town officers by Australian ballot? We'd have to remove it. That can only be done at an in-person meeting? Yes, because you vote, because Bethel votes from the floor, they're a floor vote town, so that has to be voted from the floor. That's why we haven't voted it in the past. Right, right, right. I'm just, just information. Yeah, sure. Um, so obviously I have the date of you signing it as your next meeting. Um, <clears throat> So not to throw a bunch of stuff at you. <clears throat> so the um, the water bond vote. Mm -hmm. 
So I had a couple of questions, um, sure. high level. So the first high level question is, I see in the notes on the project cost summary that um, that what I would call is like the, the water main replacement pieces are eligible for up to $450,000 of loan forgiveness. Yep. <clears throat> and and currently that piece of the project is $925,000. So, so I guess the way I'm envisioning that is <clears throat> kind of like the last one. We, we, we bond a higher number knowing that it's likely that we're going to have some subsidies there. Exactly. So if, if we do get that, and then <clears throat> does that, and then the lead subsidy, is that on top of that? So there's the five up to 425, and then there's the lead subsidy for, for those pieces as well that qualify? I think that <clears throat> if I remember, I don't have my packet. If I remember off the top of my head that the um, 425 was the lead subsidy, because remember the, when they um, did the, um, oh, the initials, IUP, that that it came out, they did them as two separate projects. And one was the water line replacement. And that did receive a 50% you know, lead subsidy. Also eligible for the same 40 year, 0% interest. <clears throat> the second part was the Crystal Drive pump house and that work. And that at the time looked like we weren't eligible for any subsidy. But since we met with Amy Golford, um, Mike Maynard and I met with Amy Golford from the state, she actually said once she saw what our medium household income was and that she expected that we actually would receive um, some, you know, forgiveness on that section. So I think the 450 is off from the, is the lead subsidy. So. So I know when we advertise the last or the first piece of the water, mm -hmm. you know, we, we bonded for 2.8 million and then, yep. but then the number that we kind of hoped to actually bond for at the end was, you know, somewhere between one, two and one five that we kind of yep. let people. Know. So if we're during our information on this one, if we're looking at bonding for 2.5, are we are we thinking that we're going to be more like two million on this at the end, of or maybe a little less? <clears throat> Excuse me, because I think we ended up our bond ended up being for like nine thirty eight, I think, out of the two point eight million. Um, so what Amy is waiting for is Richard and I to finish our draft um, water budget, which I had just sent to him on Friday. For him to look at and then they need to see our draft water budget because what happens is it sounds crazy but they look at the median household income but they also look at how much a bond would raise the water rate so if it doesn't they don't think it's going to raise the water rate enough then that actually hurts us which is seemingly ridiculous but that's the way it works so at this point, I would say that out of the 2.5, um, I would hope to be, you know, we know we're going to get rid of the 0.5 pretty much. I would definitely like, you know, expect to be less than 2 million. But until I get her the draft budget and we run the numbers, I um, I can't really give you a better, a better guess. And then we'll get kind of like last time, we'll get what that, if we pass that on to the the rate users than what that <laughs> potential quarterly number would be before we talk exactly about it. yep i've drafted the mailer so i need a couple pieces of information and that's a piece of it that i need so once i get back to the office and richard gets through the budget and um he and i sit down we'll send it off and we'll have a better idea and is that something are we going to have to make a decision to put that on the bond vote of uh, if this will be 100 percent user picked mm -hmm. up or, or a percentage might go to the town tax yeah. base or yeah apparently um we had that conversation a while ago and i think we might have at the last time too if we put it on the town as a whole then we will lose any chance of getting any um subsidy for financial reasons because the medium household income because we're going to spread it so far 
Whereas if it just goes to the users, that's a smaller population. So we would get more, we're going to get a better deal if we, you know, put it to the users. And luckily <clears throat> the other bond payment was down, I think to 23,000 and change. So it, so it certainly can be, um, you know, can be picked up by the water users, water sewer users. So what, what would be the net increase to the water user then? I don't know yet because I, like I said, I need to get, um, once I give them a draft of the water budget that you won't approve until May, she'll have a better idea. When we talked about it, um, she certainly felt that we would obviously qualify for the 40 year 0% interest. And she felt that there would be some additional um, subsidies available to us. So, <clears throat> but I don't know exactly yet what that will be. The other thing is, remember, we can go through this and we need to, we need to vote it. So we go to the voters and we vote it, it doesn't pass and we, we move on to the next, you know, we just do it in another month or so. But obviously if the bids are too high or anything like that, we can always, um, you know, rebid it or do it later. So, but, but won't it make a difference if we specify that it that it's going to the town or to the users? Or when you look at this, when you look at the warrant, the warning, it doesn't really say the the direction of the payments. No, it's being paid. Right, and it didn't last time either because the town, the entire town, has to vote just like they did on the two point eight million because right. it's good faith and credit of the entire town of Bethel that, yeah. um, you know, is going to guarantee the loan. So if for some reason the water defaulted, the town's still good for it. So um, it's just the legal war wording of the loan. I think what we had done last, or I know what we had done last time was just in the mailer itself had said how much we thought it would increase the user rate. And obviously we were low on that, or we were high on our estimate because we ended up you know, getting more forgiveness than we thought. And I was just looking it up. We had advertised last time uh, <laughs> between eight and thirteen dollars a quarter increase. Uh, that was based on uh, anywhere between one point two and I don't know two million or something that we were looking at last time because we didn't think that was going to be two point eight, but we didn't. It ended up coming in, you know, much lower than that. Our increase was like four. But um, yeah. so, I mean, if you're just looking off those numbers, I mean, I guess you're probably in the fifteen, sixteen dollars a quarter, based on two million. Yeah, and my notes from our meeting are on my desk, so roundabout. <laughs> so I can't give you the whole so, conversation okay. that I had with her. But, but again, that I think that that's something though that when you look at that. That item when they, you know, when they're going to go to vote, that that's a critical part of what should be on there for wording. That the, you know, who's who's going to cover? Is it going to be a? You this know, this would be a hundred percent on the user. Yeah, or the yeah I think it should be, you know, stated as such because that might, you know, somebody who's not a water user may look at it differently than somebody who is a water user. That's why we did the mailer last time to explain that. And the legal <clears throat> wording is the way it has to be. But um, that's why we did the mailer last time and explained it. And like mm -hmm. I said, I, I will have more information too um, once I get back to the office. So, um, but <clears throat> that's the wording that we need to put on the warning. And obviously we'll address it in town report as well as doing an individual mailer to all the occupants. So as far as the warning goes currently, anybody have any issues the way it stands? It's fine with me. Okay. And then do we want to have a discussion in regards to if we feel that the meeting should continue as set with time, date, and location, or if we want to, um, well, again, Teresa and I were talking today, and the, the, the state legislature is going to, well, I can't say is going to. It's likely, it's likely, it's on the calendar for this week and next week. It's likely that they're going to pass an amendment to the open meeting laws that will allow for the town to take measures again this year and possibly next year to move the venue date or 
you know, if you're in person, you can go to Australian uh, Australian voting if if necessary, um, if you feel um, the need to do that. Um, and there'll be some other caveats. There's a lot of meetings that are still being held 100% online um, <clears throat> that technically violate, well, the violations wouldn't, the emergency effects, uh, I think, is through like the 15th of January. So anything after the 15th of January is what there's no extension on right now. So, so I guess the question that comes before us means we're on the warning is, you know, do we feel good with moving forward, having, having our town meeting in person? Um, you know, I, I guess there's a couple of things that have been on the warning for a couple of years that we can only deal with in person. Um, so the longer that we don't deal it in person, the, the longer it stays out there. Um, or do we, you know, if the state allows do we want to look at um, either changing the date or or changing the method? How does the how do the members feel currently? <laughs> I'd like to be blown. Let's see what the legislature says. They might mm -hmm. have a door open for us to, at any time up to that date to be able to maneuver around. So so why would we want, why do we want to maneuver today? We don't even know what's going to be what we're going to be able to do. Or not. Well, we have to make a decision 100% by next meeting, right, Therese? Everything's going to get. Well, signed. you have you have to sign the warning. Um, I have to. I don't have the calendar in front of me, but I think it's the 23rd. We have to because town report goes to the printer on the 25th. So you have to sign the warning. Um, at some point, I mean, there are things that you could do. Obviously, you could encourage people to social distance. There's room enough, I think, in the gymnasium for that. Um, we could see about acquiring extra masks or just reminding people to, you know, wear a mask if they're uncomfortable. And so, which I'm sure, you know, people will do if they want to come. There are um, precautions people could take and that we could provide for people. Yeah, and I was. I was talking to Jean a little bit before we get on here and I didn't have a chance to send to everybody, but I was quickly went on the CDC site today to just kind of look up some of the um, countrywide and statewide. They have, you can, you can break it down these different graphs and show like cases versus um, deaths. Um, so I was doing that and it looks like, I mean, even though we tend to hear about a lot of cases left and right right now, it seems like, you know, a lot of different people we know are are quarantining <laughs> or are sick or something. And um, if you go on there, they have some pretty handy maps. Um, uh, countrywide, I mean, everything is on the low end of the what we call the, you know, since they started doing this in March of 2020. Um, so cases and obviously deaths per day are, are at the lowest that they've been. Um, but we have had some recent increases. Um, that people are getting sick. But then I was looking at the state data, um, the state data right now, uh, which um, of course these are reported cases. There's, there's- uh, It makes a big difference because- Yeah, um, you know, so, you know, right now um, that there's been no deaths in Vermont here. Um, and then currently there it says it's 51, 51 cases that are open um of people that have reported something so um so the data points anyways look 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 they're on the bottom end of of the uh two-year spectrum um i mean who knows maybe we'll <laughs> maybe we'll never get to zero you know with these things but um at some point we're gonna have to figure out how to live with it sure yeah yeah i mean i know it, yeah there's i mean different sides everybody's got a different side to it i know some people I've talked to are very, um, very happy and kind of, I think in some ways giddy to go to town meeting day because they haven't seen some of the people that they like to chum around with for a couple of years. And, and I think some people just kind of got used to doing things, you know, from a distance that kind of like to stay that way. So I, it's, um, I think yeah, it's and, probably a mixed bag. Yeah, I did. I just asked that question because I, there are people who for whom the whole COVID thing would keep them from coming. Yeah. And it it's a question of accessibility. I think I think the one nice thing is at least by having at the school, this is my opinion, but 
at least at the school, there is more square footage there mm -hmm. than like if we held it here, it's a, uh, you know, you're pretty much sitting on top of each other. And I think the school, unless we have a, a turnout, an unexpected turnout, which typically we have at the school about 180 people, 200. So usually there's some decent opportunities to spread out amongst the bleachers on the sides. And maybe we could, you know, maybe spread the chairs out a little, a little farther or something, you know, there might be some other precautions we can take um, too. Might be one, you know, the only thing I could think of is we typically have the chairs down close, you know, maybe there's a way we can move the chairs back a little bit. But at the same time, we'd probably have to talk with the sound engineer there on making sure that the sound carries further into the gymnasium. We're well, also going to have a setup for Australian ballot there that day too. I don't know if that's going to be out in the hallway or if it's going to be in the in the hall itself. It'll be out in the hallway. Out in the, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you should you should have because we usually use I don't want to say half the gymnasium, but we use yeah, the front half. A good of part of it. The yeah. back half you lose. Got some open maybe box, you maybe use the whole thing. If you got the people that are interested, come up front. The people who just want to be there, yeah, sit as bad. far back as possible. I can't hear you. <laughs> yeah, sorry, that's a pet peeve of mine. What was the question about where are you going to vote? Oh, the Australian ba yeah. ballot pieces of it, but that would be out in the just front. The whole yeah. all <laughs> logistic. How realistic can we? Is it to uh, have distance? <clears throat> mm -hmm. You know that. Will we have pie? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, that you know, ideally, we we could have a picnic, mm. but not the first week of March. <laughs> I don't know. Some years. Yeah. I remember one year it was really warm. But you know that. Who knows? We, then we could be outside, and we could be. You know, so I guess right now it kind of sounds like from the board, yeah, I think we're, that we're kind of in favor of leaving it alone for now. Does that yeah, sound man. right? Yeah, I'm good. Lindley's nodding her head a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Of course, you know we don't even know what's going to come out of the legislature. I, I would assume that they they will um, do something like that, but you never know. So. Let's see what the legislature okay. does. <laughs> Sounds good. So anything left? We're good with the warning and the bond informational stuff for now, other than Therese has some work to get back to us on what the rate information would look like. And yep. we'll be hosting the bond informational on the last the day of, yep. Last meeting okay. in February. Okay. Will that be by itself or that'll just be part of our, will we have to adjourn one meeting to another meeting or is it just all one no. meeting? It'll okay. just be part of your regular meeting because we'll be doing the budget informational, going over the warning, all that anyway, so. Okay. All right. And Sand Hill update. So we had a... Uh, myself and Mike Maynard had a conversation with the two folks from EPA regarding the um, $750,000, so $600,000 earmark and $150,000 of our local match. And they basically, <laughs> you know, no good deed goes unpunished because if you, if we call it a drinking water project, then the EPA and the DWSRF will use that 600,000 basically kind of against us by when they go to calculate medium household income and what we're gonna get for a subsidy. Whereas if we call it a clean water project, then they won't look at it. So what we, what the whole goal of that thing, the idea of the earmark was basically was to redo Sand Hill and stormwater. The fact that if we got water line in it, it would have been just a, a bonus. So what our thinking is, is we basically, is we take the water out of it. We're still going to do the water line because we'll be digging up the road, but that will get paid for out of the drinking water revolving loan fund. And then we use this 600000 plus the $150,000 earmark and we replace the stormwater, replace any road base that we need to and repave, you know, full 
full two lane pave. And maybe what we can do is actually go farther up the hill. Maybe we can even make it to, I don't know, maybe to the town garage. So um, because of the way that we wrote the project and the way that the feds passed it through the budget, we actually were really lucky. We ended up with some flexibility. So it makes the most sense for us financially to label it as a clean water project, do the storm water that we always wanted to do, and you know, rebuild the road, repave, which we wanted to do. And the water line will just get covered by the um, $2.8 million project, or excuse me, $2.5 million project. So it's a good, you know, and obviously we know we, we can't use any, um, we have to use our own money for the match, but we knew that, that it'd come out of the capital road budget. <clears throat> So it still gets the job done. We just it's really just what we're going to call it. So if if the water water bond goes through, when would we great when would we break ground? Hopefully in the spring or summer of twenty three. Okay, so it would be this this coming. It would be this construction season. Okay. And then do we have a certain time to, have to use the Sanders earmark by? No, actually, believe it or not, <clears throat> we don't. And you actually, the funny thing is you don't even have to technically use it all. They can, if you say you only did a, whatever, $400,000 project, um, the other money is there for you to go back, to, go back to for a future project um, unless the Senate, unless the feds decide they're going to, you know, pass something and take all that money back. So <laughs> it's a gamble we don't really want to take. And obviously all of Sand Hill stinks. So the further we can get up Sand Hill with the money, the better off we are. Okay. And it would be um, obviously part of the same project, but a separate contract. Okay. And the engineering will be covered uh, the EPA requires an environmental study and some engineering. So um, we'll also, that cost will be wrapped into the 750,000. All right. Good news. Okay. Yeah, we had the June uh, final audit. Yeah, so, <laughs> I think I made, uh, there's a link on the website and um, I have a hard cop or I have hard, a couple hard copies if somebody wants to borrow it. Um, if you have any questions about it, <clears throat> I'm not sure what I can answer tonight, but you can um, just send me an email or come see me in the office and I can explain anything to you. It obviously gives you the management letter. It gives you, you know, suggestions for down the road, things we need to do. Um, a couple different policies they suggest. Um, oh, what else? <laughs> oh, a write up about accounts not balancing. Well, you know, you're going to get that one till the day you die because if they have to make any adjustment, they, <laughs> that's the write up they give you. But no substantial findings, so everything looks good. And I'm still waiting to hear back from Tyler Kimberly, the auditor from a different firm for the transfer station. He came and spent a day and said I would hear back from him um, within by the end of December and I still haven't heard back from him um, regarding the transfer station audit because he needed a couple things, but, but he was very nice and, um, <clears throat> you know, certainly um, was just trying to catch him up to speed since he'd never audited the transfer station before. Therese, where does it show the undes undesignated fund balances? Excuse me, I think it's on, um, it's in one of the first, <clears throat> excuse me, a few pages, I think. And, you know, the <clears throat> the only thing is the trick of that is when you look at it, um, the undesignated fund balance has the assets in it, which could be, um, or which are like equipment, plant, land. So, you know, when I think about the undesignated fund balance, I'm really trying to think about, you know, the amount of cash. Right. And I think Lindley's saying... It's on page four. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, towards the top, but the, the last bullet point under financial highlights, I, I believe, is what you're asking about. 
Page, page what? Four. Page four, okay. Oh, I see, okay. Thank you. And if Thanks I remember right, there's a, there's a write-up on page seven and eight that goes more into depth on how that number comes about. So I know that the majority of you have a, I know Chris and Paul have hard copies just because they get a hard copy of the packet. But if there's anybody who wants a hard copy of the audit, um, there's, I have a couple in my office you can borrow. The one thing, I don't think they ever put it in one of these audits, but I know we had a discussion on for the size of government that we are, that there was maybe a, a size of an undesignated fund that they recommend to have. Yeah, and Fred did recommend that. And honestly, I'd have to, I could send him an email because I can't remember. I wonder if he said- It might be now that we- I can't remember. I mean, it's actually kind of a good- Yeah. <laughs> we're in good waters. I mean, we used to yeah. be talking about how do we pay all our debt, but right. I think we're getting, we're at the point now where I think we need to start seeing is what is the right size for that undesignated fund that we should be carrying um, yeah. for people and things so we don't have to do short-term borrowing. And then whatever that number is that's left over, what do we want to do with that undesignated fund? Do we want to put it in different pieces of capital funds or what do we want to move <clears> it to? Do we want to give it back to the tax people or or whatever the choices are. So it may be a good discussion for us to to have as a group now that we actually have have a rolling now balance. That you have one. <laughs> yeah. And we'll have to do a policy on it, but I can email Sullivan and Powers and ask him. I can't remember what um that meeting was. I want to say he had he had recommended like three or four hundred thousand dollars <laughs> so, but I could be wrong. I, I, I don't it was a few years ago, so it was at least three years ago, so I can't remember. Um, but I can email them and find out. And then, obviously, they have. Um, I'm sure BLCT has a draft model of a undesignated fund balance policy. We could look at. But yeah, that, that's that a, would be helpful. It's a great problem to to have. Yes. So, <laughs> True enough. Talk, yeah. We, or there, there could be. I don't even know. There could be. Maybe there's things that we could put our money in that we could collect interest on, or, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. other than have it just sit in the phone, you know. Well, something. sometimes the, so, you know, we've taken undesignated fund balance and you can put it into capital funds. Sometimes, you know, you can return it to voters by reducing the tax rate by a percentage or by say a thousand dollars or something like that. So you have options. Right, yep, sounds good. Anything more on the audit? Anybody had any questions on that? Okay. Do you have anything on town manager's report, Therese? That I can think of. Um, Let me see. Hang on. I think I, I have it on my. Mm -hmm. Let me see. <laughs> hear about the wall setting up a uh, meeting with the wall with that with the different yeah. Tab. They haven't gotten back to me. <laughs> <laughs> of course, <laughs> one guy said was going to have to fall down into Route Twelve slash One Hundred Seven before that happens. Yeah. So mm -hmm. let me see. Yeah. So I have the easement deeds. Oh yeah, and the wow. international truck repair ended up being more money. Um, Okay. Oh, there. So there is something else. That's right. So um, I know we had talked about um, at our last meeting, international, and ended up being that it needed these piston sleeves. So the that the price ended up being higher than we than I had read to you at the last meeting. And then um, during after the power outage or during the power outage um, of that storm on the fifteenth or sixteenth the town garage obviously lost power and um, they had an issue with a pump getting fuel out of the tank. So we ended up, um, they had, God bless them, rigged up something for a few days. And then when that no longer worked, they had to buy 
diesel from um, McCullough's Quick Stop. And we had, had reached out to CV Oil about having a repair person come and look at the motor, but it appears it was not the motor, it was the switch. Um, because the whole motor switch is gonna be, you know, eight to 10 grand to replace, but they were able to repair the switch. And I have not seen that bill, but AJ intimated that it could be four to $5,000. But I think Dave Eddy has more information maybe, or could speak to that more than I could because he was present and I believe he dealt with that or spoke to maybe the repairman. Is that true, Dave? No, I, I went there. I did the best I could to find it had power, but everything on that motor and switcher is, is sealed. And there's no way I was gonna be able to get inside that. I, so that's why they had to get somebody else. I don't know if you've ever seen one, but it's all bolted together, explosion yeah. proof. It's above my pay grade. <clears throat> they ended up saying that the motor, <clears throat> he thought the motor was fine. Um, it was just the switch that isn't right or that burned out or whatever. And um, so he, and the other thing too, of course, the age of the pump was so old that they came with some parts in hopes that maybe they could fix it with what they had because we certainly weren't replacing parts other than that um, because the model is so old. But, so I don't know the whole detail yet because I haven't seen the contractor's report yet if something shorted out or what happened, so. So according to your report, the, the switch was the issue, but but there potentially could be a long-term repair, which is the new pump. Yeah, which is the one that's eight to 10 grand. So <clears throat> hopefully the, excuse me, switch replacement um, or switch repair will last. I don't know. I haven't seen the report or spoken um, to AJ or Morgan about it yet. Okay. That was not what we wanted to hear, of course. <laughs> so and that would not be an insurance claim. That would just be a, Maybe you know, that'd be us. Well, that, so the, the, it's around a new pump or replacing the pump that I just needed to just raise the questions about refurbished versus you know, and they're quite genuine questions I have. I don't know what the best, what's best, but I don't know if you saw my email. Sounds like no, that. I didn't. And, um, but I will say, I believe the pump that's in there now is used. So certainly that was my question to AJ and, or Morgan was, you know, if we have to get a new pump, does the gentleman or company sell refurbished pumps? So. But it also sounds like that the, technology that we have in the ground up there is ancient and <laughs> yeah if that was a used it, pump to go into that underground tank and, that's, cool. yeah. and that that's what kicked off my uh my questions are i never know whether it's better to buy something refurbished as opposed to new in terms of to, how does that impact mm -hmm. the lifespan of the equipment and and increases or changes in efficiency and technology and all of that. It's just, it's a complicated question and I just wanted to raise it. Yeah, it'll definitely be a conversation uh, for us to have with, uh, you know, with a dealer because maybe, you know, do they warranty, you know, if they do a refurbished and what's a warranty on new versus used and maybe we don't even have to go down that rabbit hole, but um, I don't know yet. As long as all I know is it's up and running right now. <laughs> so, right. Well, that's good. Yeah, so we're good for now. Um, the other thing I think that came up was um, I had mentioned to you all that when Richard ha and I had the um, wastewater inspection, that there were going to be some things that changed because the EPA had kind of gone to the state of Vermont and said, look, we have some rules and regulations that have changed and, and you need to enact them because if you don't enact them, um, then EPA is gonna start issuing your permits. So Richard is st still working on getting a handle on what those costs are gonna be and what the time frame is going to be. 
Um, but he also, because the age of the plant, of course, you know, 30, 35 years old, we had, um, he had had some inspections done and there's a piece, end. and there's a piece in there. Hold on a minute, please. We're having sound issues. Okay. I'm unplugged, maybe. <laughs> All right, try it again, Therese. Okay. The so we're still trying to get some pricing on, or Richard is on the what how the additional testing and equipment are going to impact the wastewater budget. But this summer, or excuse me, this fall, Richard did have um, some different contractors come out to do some inspections of our existing equipment because of the age of the facility and you know tim could walk in and hear something and figure out what was off and obviously richard you know we don't have that experience yet anyways one of the things <clears throat> there's an estimate for i think in the folder that's in my bag and it's there was two um pumps that and I'm, I'm totally blowing this, but it's not in front of me. So basically they have these bronze gears. And so um, Richard had them both inspected and one of the bronze gears was fine. And the gentleman came and did a little repair and was happy with it. The second one, once those gears get even just a little bit out of whack, it affects the way the pump runs. So Richard asked for an estimate to replace it. So we got that and it was like $32,000. I thought Richard and I were going to swallow our tongue. So, um, <laughs> so <clears throat> luckily in the wastewater budget, we have $30,000 in there that we, you know, could have transferred to a reserve fund, but it looks like we're going to have to spend it um, to do that. So he has brought in someone else as well to look at a couple other aspects of the plant because the plant has aged, um, we need to get a handle on what needs to be replaced, what the timeline is. I mean, all of his new pumps are installed. He's waiting for the variable speed drives now. And our generator hasn't come in yet, but this, we don't have a choice. We, we, had to, we have to order. So <clears throat> luckily there's money in the wastewater budget to cover it, but Needless to say, we cried a little inside when we saw the price tag. We figured eight to 10, we had no idea it'd be 30. And there was also, when I was down there talking at, with you guys, I, I don't know, you might've gone over this when the speaker <laughs> cut out or not, but there's some testing requirements that used to get done, I'll make it up, <laughs> once every four or five years that now need to get done once a year, that's gonna impact it as well. So there yeah. know, maybe a couple thousand dollars more in testing on certain things each, each year too. Exactly. So Richard and I are going over the, I've gave him both the draft of the wastewater and the water budgets. And, um, you know, some of those things, because <clears throat> our water wastewater permits out for comment right now, luckily, you know, I think the majority of the other wastewater things are going to come into our next budget cycle. So we'll be able to, it won't be a big surprise like this, like this is like this one is. But it's an aging facility, and this is what we're going to deal with, I guess. Just realized we missed a uh, public comment period. There was nobody, <laughs> nobody in or around, but um, if anybody did have anything public comment wise. Um... I do. I understand the Energy Committee received a grant. Yep, it's in your packet. Okay. Yeah, it's the same one that they applied for that they came to you before about the manpower. And right. it's in there. Yeah, I think I said that. I mean, I think it's in the town manager's report. If it's not, um, it should be. <clears throat> but yes, they did get that manpower grant. So Nicole was excited about that. Um, let's see, select board meeting minutes from the 19th. Is 
Okay. Do we have a second? Second by Lindley. All in favor? Aye. Okay. And other communications in there. There was a planning commission that I had saw. Um, then there was the correspondence there with um, regards to the energy committee's grant stuff, mm -hmm. but um, I didn't see any other committee notes in there. Just that one. No, there was just the thing from Du Bois and King. That's the draft stormwater piece. It's mm -hmm. the smaller version. The bigger one's like 80 pages long. I didn't give you that. Um, <clears throat> so that one just hits the highlights. Okay. And that's part of the better connections, the money that we receive for stormwater. Um, as I said, town report has to go to the printer on the 25th. So I, Chris, I sent you an email last Friday, I think with, um, out the, you know, the year in review. So mm. I had gone through all the agendas and kind of sent a bulleted list. So if you see anything in there you want out or you want in or whatever, I'll, I'm going to draft that and then I'll send it to the select board, but <clears throat> yep. yeah, I'll take a look at that. Other than that, once now that the budget, I know the budget, I'll be able to kick out a bunch of, you know, my portion is a lot of it is the numbers and, um, which I can't do anything about. So he's settling a budget. So. All right. And as far as the, um, as far as the warning goes, the, um, have we heard about anybody wanting to run for any of the open seats? I had a conversation with someone who approached me and she, she may be interested and I had I had told her to chat with Paul <clears throat> that I felt that he would um, you know it's his seat so I suggested she reach out to Paul and have a conversation with him about you know duties I think that sometimes people forget or they don't know that it's not just a select board you're also on the board of you know adjustment board of abatement so there's sometimes there's more to it so I'm not sure if she's reached out to Paul yet or not yeah, because we got the one board seat. We have um, a lister seat. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that both individuals for public funds is running again. Is that right? Well, there's one to replace my, the balance of my term, and Sandy is coming up for okay. renewal. So there's one person for public funds, one lister. Okay. Other than that, I haven't spoken to anybody, but since it's off the floor, it doesn't mean you'd know in advance of who's running anyways. So right. No, no. Yeah. Well, just it's nice to organize it ahead of time or else people will mm -hmm. nominate and second yeah. somebody that's not there or yeah. <laughs> we've had those I did, meetings. I did incur they also agreed, you know, to Paul's comment that if they were interested in running, they did understand the value of attending select board meetings in advance, just so they knew, you know, what was coming down the pike and what you were currently working on. So, mm -hmm. All right. Anything else come before the board? <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, so we should, I'm sorry. Yes, we should say that um, obviously because of lack of staffing, the only one left standing right now is Pam Brown, God bless her. And um, so closed the office, the town manager side Monday and Tuesday. <clears throat> and um, then, and Kelly's hoping to work Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And um, so I think Pam was going to try to change the outgoing message. We put something on front porch forum and Facebook and, and um, water, Payments were due the end of December, so delinquent utility bills went out. And um, so if anyone wants to have a payment dropped off, they could just drop it through the slot in the door. Or they could mail it, um, you know, to the town office. And, um, <clears throat> you know, depending on how I feel and when my fever breaks and all that, I can go back to the office. And um, but 
you know, right now, obviously we've been short staffed off and on since October. And so now it's, now it's really short because it's just Pam. <laughs> so um, anyway, so just be patient if people need stuff, you know, it may take a week for someone to get back to you. Sorry, our new AI robots are coming in, so. Well, thank God. <laughs> Sign them up in Bethel. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take two. <laughs> it was in a front page forum that I just had. So. Yeah, they. All righty. Anything else come before? <laughs> Dave's looking to string this thing out for at least another half an hour. So, <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> um, yeah. So, anyways, I'm gonna <clears throat> see. I feel try to answer emails possibly off and on. But um, thank you very much, Dave, for getting the key to locking up the building. I really appreciate that. So you're locking up tonight. Okay. Yeah. All righty. Well, rest up. Thank you. And Lindley, I'm pulling for you so that you're healthy. <laughs> All right. Hey, Paul, motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Well, have a good night, everybody. Thank you. You too.